you're going to be successful in any business, you've got to recognize the power of systems to do work repeatedly so that you don't have to constantly repeat the same thing over and over. You can create systems that will do the job for you. <clears throat> now, earlier in my book, earlier in my book on 13 resolutions, I talk about the power of keeping score. And the McDonald's brothers have a great example of this when they looked at their business. Now, they'd been in the um, restaurant business for many years. They finally sat down and they looked at their last three years of sales. They pulled out every receipt, everything they had uh, sold over the last three years. They had this big barbecue pit on one side. They sold hamburgers on another. They had all of these products. And they pulled the receipts, and here's what they found. They discovered that 80% of their business was in hamburgers. 80%. Can you imagine running a business for three years? And here's hamburgers, which is very simple, flip. And then you've got this barbecue process and this barbecue pit, all this complication, which only produced 20% of your sales, but 80% of your headaches. And here's this simple process producing 80% of your sales. So by keeping score, they said they did something absolutely radical revolutionary they got rid of the barbecue th entirely and they dropped down they dropped they limited here's that inspired by the data the brothers eliminated the barbecue pit completely reducing their 25 item menu down to 11 items now think about this if you're in business and you say hey guys i got a great idea let's reduce the amount of items we sell by over 50 percent you're not normally thinking, whoa, we're going to explode now. <laughs> Unless you understand systems. Because what they said is, let's do less of what's really not making a difference. Maybe the principle, we can call it major on the majors. Let's do the most important things. And let's do more of the more important things. And let's do less of the less important things. So by going, dropping from 25 items down to 11, here's what happened. Oh, here's another point. <clears throat> because they sat there and they systematized this whole thing, they literally drew it out. They took their tennis court and they made it an example of, imagine if we, if we just did hamburgers, we could get rid of that barbecue kit, we could put all this together, and they studied the movement of every employee in their store to get this just right. And by figuring out the flow, they took their hamburger that they were selling at a, a normally a competitive 30 cents a hamburger and they dropped it to 15 cents. 15 cents. Now there's a saying, a very important saying for all businesses should, should know this one. Sell to the masses, live with the classes. Sell to the classes, live with the masses. If you're selling Ferraris, I don't care how good a salesman you are, there's only a limited market. But what do you think the market was for 15 cent hamburgers? Well, we know the end of that story. And so it absolutely, they took off. <clears throat> their, let, let me just explain their first year. The restaurant sales increased from 200,000. They were doing good before the change. But they went from 200,000, their first full year went from 200,000 to $350,000. Cutting their products offered, the food offered by over 50%, nearly doubled their sales. Unheard of, unheard of. Here's what John Love said, the brothers refused to let even the choice of condiments impede the fast food format. All hamburgers were prepared with ketchup, mustard, onions, and two pickles. Any order deviating from this delayed the service. Now, <clears throat> in today's market, they expect that type of systematic discipline and choices. So remember, we're back in the 1950s when we're talking this. So systems today have to figure out how do I create that repeatability and duplicatability, yet still give the customer exactly what he wants. So this is a little dated. I mean, the competition's even, even stronger today. But McDonald's brothers, he said, they said, if we give people a choice, there will be chaos. <laughs> you will eat those pickles, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> Oh, boy. But Croc was sold. He looked at this. Now, remember, Croc had sold multi-mixers to nearly anybody in the food industry for 
nearly 30 years. He knew this business. And so when he went, he knew a winner when he saw it. <clears throat> Kroc understood that the business needed to be packaged more than just selling cheap hamburgers. This is the true genius, in my opinion, of Ray Kroc. Here's how Michael Gerber described it. Ray Kroc created much more than a fantastically successful business. He created a model upon which an entire generation of entrepreneurs have since built their fortunes. The franchise phenomenon. Gerber called it the business format franchise. And if you think about business, not just accomplishing a task, but a creating a business system to accomplish that task over and over and over again. It's a turnkey system. You get in, you follow the McDonald's franchise, business format franchise, and you produce results. And people did. See, Ray Kroc understood that he was not selling hamburgers, he was selling a business system. And whatever business you're doing, don't just think about the end product. If you're creating a business that other people can use, think about creating a business that's so turnkey that anybody with the hunger to learn can make it work because that's essential. If the, if the franchisee didn't believe the McDonald's system could produce profitable results, no one would purchase the franchise. Would you buy a franchise if you knew it wouldn't work? Well, of course not. But if you knew, oh, I mean, if you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that your business would be successful, then certainly you would invest in a business that you knew you'd produce results. And that's the key. Here's what Michael Gerber said. At that point, Ray Kroc began to look at his business as the product and at the franchisee as his first, last, and most important customer. Are you getting that? In other words, the customer's not... The, the first customer, certainly we have a customer that comes up to the counter, but how, again, we had all these people go to McDonald's, right? How many people were served a hamburger by Ray Kroc? Nobody. And yet, if it weren't for Ray Kroc and the McDonald's brothers creating a system that was duplicatable, none of us would have ever experienced that hamburger because he sold a business format franchise that was so good that when someone bought it, it was so successful that somebody else noticed their success and then they bought a business format franchise. How many people are old enough to remember when the first McDonald's came into town, right? And he's like, oh, I gotta go check this place out. What is this, these yellow M's here? And so it's the same type of uh, process. Driven by the desire to buy a business, the franchisee only wanted to know one thing. Does it work? Does it work? Can you imagine someone saying, you know, I think I want to, I think I want to buy a McDonald's franchise. Well, why do you want to do that? Because I've always dreamed of selling hamburgers. <laughs> that probably wasn't it. Or this one. I tasted the hamburger. This is going to sell billions. <laughs> probably not. So why did they do it? Because they were convinced it would work. That if, you are, if you're creating a business format franchise, your number one assignment is to create a business model that works, that it produces results, that people can own their own business and produce results. Here's what Kroc said. The McDonald's brothers had cracked the code for high speed, low cost fast food service. He would complete the packaging by providing the visionary leadership and the salesmanship to make this dream a reality. Ray Kroc was, if there, without Ray Kroc, there's no McDonald's system that anybody would have ever heard of. It would have just been a small town uh, out in California. Yeah, I think I heard of them once. But Ray Kroc took it mainstream by taking the idea in one store and creating a business format franchise. That's the secret. <clears throat> Gerber describes Kroc's system again. Forced to create a business that worked in order to sell it, he also created a business that would work once it sold. No matter who bought it, no matter who bought it, it would work. 
Armed with that realization, he set about the task of creating a foolproof, predictable business. Foolproof. Now, if you think about what McDonald's put together, there were high school kids and retirees are a big portion of their employee base. The turnover, they say, is sometimes over 50%, and yet they're producing a business model that works because they created a systematic, duplicatable way to produce results that would work even with that type of turnover. And you know, Ray Kroc had to produce a business that worked because his percentage that he, there was only 1.9%. The franchisee, the agreement he signed with uh, the McDonald's brother was crazy. He shouldn't even have signed it. I mean, when people actually started looking at it, I said, Ray, you signed a business, you agreed to expand their business and you only, there's a $950 sign up fee. Now it's a back in time a little bit, but still 950 is not that much money for your own franchise. And only 1.9% of the profits, only 1.9% of the revenue was paid in to the McDonald's brothers, 0.5% uh, uh, of that 1.9. So about a third of that, or fourth of that, went to the McDonald's brothers and Ray Kroc himself only kept 1.4%. Very low margins. So when you've got very low margins like that, you better have a product that works. You better have a business format franchise that works or you're not gonna be in business too long. And he knew that, so he started working right away. So Gerber says, how could the components of the prototype have to be constructed so that resulting business system would be replicated over and over? So he was working on this prototype. He wanted, he started his first store, Ray Kroc, when he bought in, he started in Des Plaines, Illinois, and he starts a prototype. And he said, we're gonna work on this store until I can produce results so good that the next store, all they have to do is duplicate what I've done here. So that will produce results. And then someone can study either one of these two stores and start another. And he started, he started a, um, Virtuous cycle. He started a cycle of success. That's exactly what successful business format franchises do.